Hello, my name is Adam Lennox. I wanted to apologize for being unable to attend the session in person, and personally thank you for your continued support. Today I will provide a summary of ROS UV Simulator and its capabilities, as well as where our research is currently and may go in the future. So, uh, when I started this research, it required me to learn a lot. And one of the first things I had to learn starting as an undergraduate is what is ROS? and um, what is this software and how can we use it? And ROS is at its core a message passing library. Uh, basically, um, we can treat a device on a robot as a node and then another device on the robot could be another node and any communication between the two uh, can be considered an edge. So using this idea, which is really simple but also really power powerful, allows us to treat um, basically any robotics problem as a graph problem. And like all good computer scientists, if we can turn our problems into graph problems, we can solve the problem. So uh, this is an example of what a robot may look like in ROS. Uh, each device in the robot is one of these boxes, and then the lines between them are communication and the direction of the communication. Next, uh, there's another aspect to ROS that comes in this toolkit, which is called Gazebo. And Gazebo is the other side of ROS. It allows physical dimensions and physics to be applied to our robots. It can, if it can be modeled in CAD or simulated in a game engine, then it can probably be done in Gazebo. Alternatively, you could use a game engine to do this, such as Unreal Engine, but uh, ROS already comes with Gazebo, so that's what we, we use most of the time. So the last two things that you might be interested in that are used a lot in our research are RViz and RQT, specifically RT, RQT Graph. Um, RViz is kind of a, a tool there to allow us to see what the robot sees. So when a robot gets LiDAR information, it just receives matrix matrices of uh, distances. But what we want to see it as is a projection of those um, into a our environment. So these colored lines here are actually point clouds uh, that are used that are being obtained from like a lidar sensor on that robot that's way in the center as a little tiny dot as it's been rotating around. And then RQT graph is a way of us seeing those nodes that are exist in the robot and what services it has. Uh, using uh, these services, we can do a lot of debugging as well as um, finding as well as finding possible uh, areas where our our ideas might be flawed next um, UUV, what is UUV simulator so normal land-based robotics environments or even some air-based robotics environments are very well supported in ROS but marine environments are not as well supported so UUV simulator was a project to kind of address this issue it started in 2016 with the goal of um, implementing the gazebo plugins and ROS nodes necessary to simulate the unmanned underwater vehicles such as ROVs and AUVs. And it, development continues to this day with an active Discord community and a constantly updating GitHub. Uh, the community is great. They will answer pretty much any question you s throw at them. And if they don't have a solution, they'll work with you to try to find one. So I'm going to cover a couple of the capabilities of UUV Simulator at this point. Specifically, there are two robots that are already built into UUV Simulator that we have modified and we use in our research or we might use in the future. So my favorite robot is the Rex ROV2. It's really easy to understand, and there's quite a few sample programs for it that you can use uh, to kind of get your hands dirty at the beginning. So. It has six degrees of freedom, but with a limited pitch and roll, and it is naturally buoyant. It comes with a camera and a couple of built-in sensors, such as GPS and pressure sensors. Uh, and it has support for arms or manipulators if we ever need those in the future. Um, so it idles either by floating to the surface or by maintaining its current position in the water. And our personal version of this has had the addition of another camera and an Azure Azure Connect LiDAR sensor added, which uh, we can simulate um, the LiDAR information and we can add noise to it and it'll become really similar to what a like high precision sonar 
for imaging might be, which could be really useful in an underwater environment. And having the addition of another camera might allow us to fuse the data together in the future for more accurate results. Our next robot is the ECA A9. I don't actually know what any of that stands for, um, but it has six degrees of freedom and navigates similar to like what a torpedo or a missile might navigate like. Uh, it steers with its fins and it has a single thruster at the back. This means that in order to have an idle, it either needs to kind of glide through the water um, and slowly sink, or it has has to keep moving. So it has a default idle state of going in a circle by basically just turning in a wide radius circle around its last um, its last commanded point. And it has the same sensor loadout as the Rex ROV, but with the camera positioned at the nose and side scan sonars on the sides. Um, so then in UUV simulator, one of the first things you got to figure out how to do is how to apply movement to your robots. So you can either drive the robots manually with a controller, or you can use some sort of trajectory-based um, controller. I specifically made a dynamic points controller, which essentially waits for messages that are waypoints, which are a position in space that the robot should try to get to. And it then generates a trajectory to that position and begins movement towards that. Uh, in the future, this could be more complicated. We could run it with some machine learning algorithm or a path planning algorithm of some sort. There's plenty of those in existence. Uh, for now, we mostly do waypoint files, which are just, hey, go to these 10 points in this order, and it'll generate its trajectory and drive that path. Uh, there's also a go-to service, which is essentially the same thing as what I just described, except for it's a singular event where you tell the robot, hey, go to 50, 50, 50, and um, then return to idle state. So uh, while the base model of the Rex ROV has um, a good layout of sensors, we wanted something a little bit more complicated. We wanted a proof of concept uh, for the future because we knew we would probably want to use sonar imaging or lighter imaging of some sort for research in the future, whether that be ship hull inspection or mapping of, uh, of the underwater surface. And the most uh, popular con LIDAR sensor we can find, at least in our initial price point, is the Azure Connect. Turns out that it's really popular with the ROS community as well. So we were able to find uh, the Azure Connect library from Microsoft and implement it onto our robot um, through some ROS libraries and modify the current Rex ROV to have a um, LiDAR sensor that we can use. Uh, with some modification to the noise that the LiDAR sensor has, uh, you can get it to kind of approximate what an imaging sonar might look like, and the results were quite satisfying. We were able to get scans of four ships in the ocean uh, around ourselves and um, We'll sh show more of this in the demo. Then another thing that you're going to want to be able to do in UUV simulator is probably change some properties in the water. So maybe we want to have murky water. Well, you can change the water opacity. Um, maybe you want to add a current to the water, some sort of like disturbance that the robot will have to navigate through. Well, there's the solution of what are called plumes in UUV simulator. Um, they essentially act like particle clouds, and they can apply physics to objects that pass through them. Uh, lastly, you want to be able to modify worlds. So you want to be able to modify the terrain of the world, um, and maybe the amount of ocean that you're simulating at a time, add objects to it. Uh, this is actually really easy to do. You just need height maps of the ocean floor, and you can treat that as a singular surface, and then you fill the rest with water. and you can either treat the water as being perfectly clear, or we can change the opacity um, and add currents as we want. So the last thing you want to be able to do is add uh, static models, right? So you might want to maybe add some fish or add like a pier, or in this case, a shipwreck to the water. It's actually pretty easy if you can model it in CAD. 
and get some sort of STL file, you can put it into the gazebo world and give it some static properties. So for our future work, um, there's quite a few ways we could go. We could leverage the side scan sonar capabilities of UUV simulator to start maybe trying to train some models to detect anomalies at the um, seabed floor or maybe do some mapping, um, apply swarm robotics to maybe merge those maps together and get a higher precision, do some self-localization. Uh, the area of research that I'm most interested in is we started out our DSE algorithm research um, trying to use Aruka tags and found that Aruka tags have actually a pretty poor um, angular positioning. They're really good at like the distance from an object, but not so much at the pose. So um, maybe if we can fuse LiDAR information or sonar imaging with this, we could get a better pose estimation. And uh, that might require some machine learning, but one thing that we can do to try to start getting training information for that is create um, a floating LiDAR.